In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated. <clears throat> Donna, I have it. August 21st, 2017. I don't know if you remember, but that was the day of the solar eclipse. Hmm. My grandson, London, was seven years old, and he was, he was kind of really into it as he heard the news about it and all the anticipation and everything, and really wanted to learn about it and everything. And if you also remember, there was a shortage of the special glasses that you need. And, and there were, on Amazon, there were being war warnings about selling fake ones and stuff. And, then I heard that the Pacific Science Center had a, a large supply and were going to be open. And so being the, the good, as he calls me, the grandfather that I am, <laughs> I went there at 5.30 in the morning and got in line so my daughter and he could, could come and join us. And it was, a, it was just really an interesting day because people were really excited about it. Everybody was there. and and. People had bought breakfast that were in line with me, and, and people were talking, and it was, just, it was just wonderful, and all this anticipation. And so finally they opened, and there was a very informative exhibit about the eclipse and everything, and people were going through that. And then as the time got closer, you could just feel, feel the excitement that was in the air as people waited for this event to happen. And then, as it got close to the time, it kind of got eerie. Suddenly, everything got quiet. <clears throat> everything got quiet. And people all got quiet and quit talking and laughing. And, and everybody was just kind of looking up. And, and I have this picture of everybody just kind of looking up at the sky with these, these funny glasses on. <laughs> and as I said, there was this eerie silence. And it grew dark, and it got cool, and then it got cold for a moment. And as I looked over, I saw my daughter, who for some reason, because she's always cold, had a jacket on in this August morning, and suddenly had my grandson under her jacket with her. And as I thought about our gospel this morning, as I thought, as I read that line, that there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. I couldn't help but think, imagine before we knew how things really worked the way we do in science, how the people would have felt when they saw an eclipse. Surely they would have thought the evil one was coming to blacken out the earth. And perhaps it was the end of times. And I was praying about this this week. I also thought about the song, the Bonnie Riot song, uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart. Bonnie Taylor, I'm sorry, Bonnie Taylor song, Total Eclipse of the Heart. And I thought about all those in our world who live in a quiet desperation, those who feel alone, those who don't experience love, those who totally feel isolated, especially at this time of the year. And then I thought about that eclipse that we've been going through these past 20 months as we've dealt with the pandemic and the darkness that we've seen in our own lives. I don't know how cold it got in those, what, 100 and, 140 seconds, I think it was, it's two and a half minutes or something like that, of the eclipse. But again, that image of my daughter just hugging her son and making him warm was a reminder to me of our call as Christians during this time of Advent. Advent is a time of hope. That's what we lit the first candle and prayed this morning. And in her book, While We Wait, Mary Lou Redding writes, Hope does not build on certainty. To hope means not to be completely sure that there are no guarantees. Hope, 
Hope is a spiritual practice. And it isn't just for this first week of Advent, but it is something that we're called to throughout our lives, every day and every place. And as I said, as I, as I remember that picture of my daughter, I thought this natural act of a mother's love for her son, isn't that, isn't that what we're truly called to as Christians? To hear or see that little person shivering or whimpering, that little cry, and to offer them some comfort, even in the smallest of ways, in any way that we can. As I was discussing this with my, my preaching group this week, one of my friends put it this way. He said, we do not claim to change the world, at least not all at once, only to listen to it. We're called to silence ourselves so we can hear one person's whimper and respond in whatever way we can. We're not the Messiah. We cannot fix all the world's problems and sufferings, but we can do something to help some one person in some little way. There's a song, there's a line in that song, Total Eclipse of the Heart. All I, and I need you more than ever, and if only you hold me tight. And isn't that our hope? Isn't that our relationship with our God? To have our God just embrace us like the mother embraces her child and to keep us warm and to keep us safe. That is our hope. And then as Christians, as believers, as the hands and feet of Christ, then we're called to put that response, to put that love that we feel into action, into the love of others. And so my prayer, my hope for this Advent is that we will allow ourselves, like on that August morning those four years ago, as we wait in anticipation and excitement for the coming of Christ, that we will realize the significance of that event in Bethlehem so many years ago, and that we will allow ourselves to experience the silence, to silence ourselves just to listen, to silence all the noise and all the consumerism and all the busyness that goes on at this time of the year, but allow ourselves just to set some time, just to be silent and hear that quiet, gentle voice of God. And out of that voice that we will open our hearts and that we will share that love. It's my hope, it's our hope that as we await the coming of Christ's child, that we will prepare a way of the Lord into our own hearts and into the entire world. Amen. Amen. So let us stand, if we're able, and let us join with believers throughout the world, people who live in hope and profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 